Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers, this is your host Ram, uh, welcoming you to your daily edition of the Cricket Apping Show this on a Sunday. And well, on this cricket show, there's one exciting one day international, this was the first one day international of the series between West Indies and Sri Lanka and what an exciting match we had. In fact, Sunil Narayan almost gave West Indies victory when on his comeback he struck uh, he, he struck thrice uh, to dismiss Angelo Matthews um, and then two debutants were there, Ganesha Gunatheka and Shahan Surya. The match was reduced to 26 overs a side with Sri Lanka putting on, sorry, uh, uh, with West Indies putting on uh, 159 runs uh, batting first uh, of eight wickets in the 26 overs and then the match really had some twists and turns and finally uh, there was uh, a cardinal error made by uh, Johnson Charles, the part-time bowler who was bowling in the absence of Andre Russell who was not there, uh, which really dented West Indies chances I thought. And Johnson Charles went on to bowl, uh, in fact he bowled a no ball after bowling so well when 11 runs were needed of the final over for the uh, Sri Lankans, Johnson Charles bowled uh, a no ball after giving away just four runs of the first four balls in the fifth delivery he delivered a no ball that is on the penalty mat over i would say the 25th over uh, and that enabled uh, ajunta mendes to nail it by slamming it over the uh, fence for a sex uh, to really really calm matters for sri lanka and secure uh, the first win for sri lanka in the first one day national over the west indies so, but what a match it was, it was extremely exciting. Uh, the other match, uh, with the test match, uh, today was the final the test match which started between England and Pakistan and Sharjah and the England bowlers did a wonderful job. I mean, one thing I can say, the Sharjah cricket ground, this pitch is already showing a turn right from the first day and we saw Samit Patel uh, picking up uh, two wickets today. In fact, I, um, I thought uh, it was a very wise move on the part of England to go for a three-spin, uh, three-pronged uh, spin attack, and that enables uh, Sumit Patel to get a get in a get a look in, and he didn't disappoint. He bowled beautifully to pick up two wickets, but the main damage was done by James Anderson, uh, who became the highest wicket taker for England here today, uh, and by by breezing past Ian Gordon and Sean Pollock of South Africa. And, uh, you know, uh, Anderson has 424 victims in Test cricket, is the, uh, and he bowled superbly to pick up four wickets, ably supported by Stuart Broad, who also bowled magnificently, and that enabled uh, England to bowl out Pakistan on the first day of the final Test match here in Sharjah for just 234 runs, and in reply, England were four for no loss. So, but first, I'm going to take you down to the excitement, and that will be the Sri Lanka versus... West Indies, what a one-day international match we had here at the Art Prem Dasa Stadium in Colombo. The beginning of the one-day series and it was a real beauty that happened that day. Even though one thought that um, uh, the spectators would have been robbed of some cricket here uh, because the 50 overs was nipped off because of rain and finally it ended into a 26-over affair. West Indies batted first and uh, they, raised 20, uh, they raised 159 for 8. West Indies didn't have a good beginning. In fact, they lost both the aggressive openers pretty quickly in the piece. As Sharanga Latmal, uh, really bowling superbly, getting the ball to jag in and jag away, uh, picked up the wickets. In fact, he dismissed uh, both the openers pretty quickly. Uh, Andre Fletcher was three, and Johnson Charles was a beautiful delivery from Latmal, which came in a long way and struck uh, Johnson Charles on the pad. He was sent packing for one. After that, Marlon Samuels continued his very, very poor run in this uh, particular tour of Sri Lanka where he was LBW Lakmal for two and Suranga Lakmal had rocked West Indies with three wickets uh, in the initial stages and then it was left and then we saw Jonathan Carter being claimed by the debutants. In fact, Sri Lanka had two debutants today, two young debutants. One was Danisha Gundatelaka and the other one was Shahan Jayasuriya who picked up his uh, main and won the international wicket when he actually clean bowled Jonathan Carter for eight. That made it 42 for four and then walked in Andre Russell uh, to join Darren Bravo who was looking good. He was the only one who was able to really uh, stay there at the wicket Darren Bravo but Andre Russell once he, he actually entered the scene 
there was a real spark into this West Indies innings as uh, Andrew Russell started um, hitting the ball with, uh, with furious power uh, and he started sending uh, the balls into the fence and over the fence and uh, this partnership was going on and this partnership really uh, went on uh, in, at a very breezy rate from 42 for 4 uh, in the 16th over uh, with Andre Russell coming into the scene. The 100 was raised in the uh, 22nd over as uh, uh, West Indies decided to attack with the best form there uh, because they knew this is uh, a low, uh, uh, this is a very uh, truncated affair and uh, Andre Russell really pinched the boundaries uh, for the West Indies and his uh, favorite target was the cover and mid wicket region from which he was hitting those sixes and then Darren Bravo himself, I mean uh, Russell was going very well, in fact 58 runs were added uh, in just, um, I would say, uh, if you look at it, it is uh, just uh, six overs uh, absolute slam bang stuff going on and then Andre Russell was a victim of the bowling Matthews for 41 uh, and then we saw uh, the dismissal of Bravo bowled by Mendes for 38 with 3 fours and 1 of 6 Brathway was out for 9 to the bowling of Ajanta Mendes but Jason Holder the West Indian captain came in and pasted 36 of just uh, pasted 36 of just 13 deliveries uh, to, to finish the West Indies innings as he was run up for 36 of 13 Delvis, 2 fours and 3 sixes. Ramdan was not out on 9 and West Indies uh, had a score of 159 for 8 of their 26 overs. And as far as uh, the Sri Lankan, uh, let's have a look at bowling. Balingara, well, I thought uh, he bowled uh, okay today. 6 overs, 1 minute run for 20. His bowling figures really reflect that. But Lucknow was superb at the start of the innings. 5 overs home made in 3 for 15. Shannon Ayake 5 overs cost him 25. Shahan Jasuri on his double getting his maiden international wicket in the form of Jonathan Kara. 3 overs 1 for 15. Argenta Mendes bowled 4 overs was costly but picked up 2 wickets for 46. And Angel Matthews bowled 3 overs which was very costly. League 35 runs and picked up 1 wicket. As far as Sri Lanka were concerned, they were chasing 163 runs to win and, uh, and they definitely got an explosive start not from Kushal Pereira but from Telgar and Dilshan really made one wonder uh, that um, uh, one, one really uh, look at Dilshan as a Dilshan of old as he started uh, those uh, started hitting those strokes uh, that he normally used to do in his heyday as uh, Kushal Pereira was run up for 14 or 16 balls to work but Dilshan carried on uh, in his uh, many way in fact um, uh, crashing his fastest uh, ODI half century of just 25 balls as uh, he contributed uh, uh, 59 of just 32 done with six fours and three sixes and he was really uh, doing it uh, superbly for Sri Lanka. Kiramani was up to the bowling of Brathwaite for 17 uh, and uh, that was the time when uh, things really uh, were looking like uh, Sri Lanka had it under control even after Dilshan was out the score was 104 for three uh, and um, uh, Angela Matthews and uh, uh, Danishka Gunatelaka uh, I thought uh, had actually um, had taken the score uh, to 132 and that was the time it all started it was uh, it was uh, the, the it was looking like uh, Sri Lanka were absolutely under control because 120 for 3 in the 16th over they still had around uh, 39 odd runs but uh, they had tickets in hand but suddenly uh, Sunil Nareen as I said today was making his comeback into the West Indian team after a gap of 14 months uh, really struck it big in that particular over uh, that was in the that was the 19th over. In fact, uh, uh, when Angelo uh, Angelo Matthews was uh, a victim of the bowling of Taylor actually for 30 of 17, but uh, when the score reached 132 in the 19th over, still things were under control uh, for the Sri Lankans. But then Sunil Narin came in uh, and really put a hole into the Sri Lankan innings as he picked up three wickets in a single over, which he's known for. And um, it was first to go was Melinda Srivardhana, who had a ugly hoik uh, towards the leg side, and that mid on was into business. Brathwaite took the catch, he was gone, bowled Narine for seven, and then Sunil Narine um, uh, uh, got the two debutants to get. There was uh, Danishka Gunathilaka, who was making his uh, one international debut, and they had two debutants in the middle, which uh, Shehan uh, Jaya Surya. But, um, so, well, let me tell you, Gunatilaka and Shahan Jaya Surya on their double couldn't read the off break that was bowled by Sunil Narain 
and they lost their stumps in the same over and three wickets uh, in that over uh, really put a sort of a real uh, halt on the West Sri Lankan innings as from 132 for three uh, now the score was uh, suddenly plummeted to 133 for seven with a triple strike done by Sunil Nareen and then it was Shane Anayake who was there he was bowled by Carter uh, for seven and then finally uh, as I said it all came down to the wire uh, when Sen and IK was gone. 152 for 8 when Sen and IK was dismissed uh, and then we saw Ajanta Mendes come in but some tight overs. Jonathan Carter uh, picking up uh, after Sunil Narin did his job we saw Jonathan Carter picking up two wickets of two balls as first he had uh, Sen and IK clean bowled and Rasit Malinga was trapped LBW Carter 152 for 9 in the 24th over uh, and two more was scored. The 25th over was being and after the 25th over was interested to Johnson Charles. Uh, the reason being that Andre Russell, uh, who batted well uh, because of an injury, couldn't actually bowl. He only bowled five overs for 18 runs. Yes, he was costly, but uh, since Andre Russell was not there, uh, Jason Holder uh, had to go in for the services of Johnson Charles, the part-time uh, bowler. And Johnson Charles, when he was doing a decent job, which had Suranga Lakmal uh, and Ajanta Mendes at the crease, they were the last wicket pair at the crease. And Johnson Charles uh, was doing a good job. In fact, he had given away uh, just uh, four or uh, four runs, I reckon, uh, four runs in that particular over of the first four balls, which was pretty good going uh, when Sri Lanka required 11 runs, but they still had two more overs to go. It was, it was a penalty ball over, which was being bowled by Johnson Charles. But, um, uh, well, then we saw that uh, now after bowling four good deliveries, uh, Johnson Charles made a cardinal error of actually uh, bowling a no ball. And once he bowled a no ball, the, the ball was uh, mishit uh, and uh, it, it enabled uh, Ajanta Mendes uh, to stay at the crease. So that not Ajanta Mendes there and Ajanta Mendes, well, he wasted no time. The very next delivery, since the no ball was bowled, uh, Johnson Charles was called for a free free hit. There was a free hit for the Sri Lankans and it was uh, Ajanta Mendes who capitalized on that free hit as he sent the ball soaring over the ropes after moving his legs further and slamming it over the fence for a six to finish off the match which had its uh, own share of twists and turns but then victory for Sri Lankas. They won the first one international by one wicket, a very close victory. Ajanta Mendes was not out on 21 of 20. There was one four and one six. Lakhman was not out on one. Match over. Sri Lanka leading the three match series now 1 0. Jerome Taylor, 5 was 1 for 32. Sunil Narin, splendid balling there. The triple strike really putting lots of pressure on the Sri Lankan uh, batting there. Sunil Narin, 6 overs, no minimum, 3 for 21 runs. Come back after 14 months. Superb going from Sunil Narin. Jason Holder, 5 overs, none for 29. Brathway bowled 5 overs for costly, 35-2. Andre Russell couldn't uh, take much part in the bowling here today. Jonathan Carter, 2 for 1, 1 overs, no winning, 2 for 14. Marsh, Johnson Charles uh, bowled just 5 balls, as I said, he was clattered for 6 to bring up the winning head. So that is it. Uh, Tilgat Nedilshan uh, was uh, named uh, uh, man of the match. So that match is all over. Uh, now, the next match that I'm going to look at is the test match. Uh, the first day's play in the uh, final test match between Pakistan and England and at stumps on day one uh, in fact Pakistan were bowled out for 234 England replied to four for no loss of the two overs that they played it all started with the Pakistani captain Ms. Bowl Huck actually winning the toss uh, and uh, deciding to bat first and England decided uh, that they would uh, bring in Summit Patel into the team they probably they thought that uh, this pitch will definitely take turn and they were absolutely right in that aspect as uh, Pakistan after winning the toss deciding Ms. Bowl had decided to bat first. For Pakistan, well uh, the start was not good. Azhar Ali was into the mix uh, which was good to see and Azhar Ali, well uh, he was the first victim uh, today after coming back to the, the Pakistan team as James Anderson got him uh, got him to nick a ball outside the off stump. He was gone, caught Barristo for not. So that made it 5 for 1. Mohamed Hafiz was looking good with his uh, batting. He was uh, uh, trying to uh, trying to uh, build an innings there. But then it was Moin Ali who picked up his wicket by getting him caught by Broad for 27, 2 4s. And as Moin Ali bowled, one really saw 
uh, signs, um, uh, early signs of turn there, uh, and that prompted uh, uh, the skipper to uh, actually bring in Samit Patel also into the mix. In fact, Shoaib Malik was uh, doing well. He was surviving a few LBW shouts, but then uh, he was along with Yunus Khan, and uh, both uh, were really, really putting their head down and playing, uh, not attempting anything rash, and what things were going on uh, in a very, very steady manner. Uh, when the score was reached 88, it was Stuart Broad uh, who picked up the wicket of Shoaib Malik uh, by getting him caught by Barristow behind the stumps of 38 with five boundaries. Uh, and then Ms. Bowl Huck joined in. Well, once Ms. Bowl Huck came, uh, there was a slight um, a change in the uh, Unis Khan, who was um, at, uh, in his very short stay at the crease, uh, was uh, actually doing well uh, by playing his cut shot, the pull shot, the sweep shot. Uh, he was gone as uh, James Anderson uh, nipped him LBW for 31 with four boundaries. Uh, that made it 103 for four. And Asad Shafiq was dismissed. This was the time Samit Patel came in. The, uh, the Australian, he came in and picked up uh, Asad Shafiq's wicket for five. Uh, and then we saw Safraz Ahmed uh, make an entry. Safraz Ahmed joined Miss Baal Haq. Uh, and suddenly we saw uh, there, was, uh, there was some... Uh, they saw that the score was 116 for 5, uh, and then we definitely saw uh, some sort of um, a real stroke making coming in as Ms. Baul Huck and Shafraz Ahmed uh, decided to really play uh, in a bit of an aggressive manner because they realized that the ball is turning uh, and they really need to play their stroke. So that's precisely what they did. And uh, in fact, they raised the higher stand of the uh, Pakistani innings as they raised 80 runs for the uh, for the uh, sixth wicket, and Safraz Ahmed's contribution was uh, 39 uh, before he was a victim of the bowling of uh, Moin Ali uh, with 39 with three boundaries. But Ms. Bawlak was, well, he was, as you know, Ms. Bawlak is the one who plays in spurts. Uh, in fact, you, you will find him uh, very defensive for some time. Suddenly, he will come out of his shell and bang some sixes, and then again, he will go back in his shell, or sometimes he will start playing in the same aggressive mode. And Ms. Bala, as I said, he is pure gold for the Pakistani team. And he showed us why here by playing a compact little innings. And while that was going on, Ms. Bala was still at the end of the uh, Summit Patel produced a beautiful delivery, which turned in from the leg stump and knocked off Vahab Riyal's stump. The beauty of the delivery, and Vahab Riyal knew nothing about it. He was gone for naught. And then Stuart Broad uh, uh, put uh, Yasir Shah into the pavilion uh, by getting him caught for seven with 1-4, uh, and then Ms. Baal Haq himself uh, fell a victim as he was caught by the root of the ball of Anderson for making the highest score in the Pakistan innings of 71, with 7 fours and 2 sixes. Barbara was not around 6, and the last wicket to go was Rahat Ali, caught by Ali of the bowling of Anderson for 4, 234 all out. A uh, very good effort from the England bowlers, especially considering there was turning the pitch where Samit Pradeh pick up 2 wickets. Uh, we, uh, Adil Rashid couldn't pick up anything, 2 wickets for Moeen Ali. And uh, uh, Anderson did a splendid job uh, by picking up 15.1 over 7 millions, 17 runs and 4 wickets bowled superbly. Abroad uh, also uh, really, really halted Pakistan's progress and really uh, started uh, really, really uh, getting them, um, uh, keeping them, keeping the batsmen very quiet by reeling off 5 consecutive maiden overs at one particular time. So Abroad 13 overs, 8 maidens, 13 runs and 2 wickets, Ben Strokes 11 overs, 4 maidens, not 23. Yes. Uh, a word about Ben Stokes. Ben Stokes was injured trying to take a real flying flying catch there. Uh, he, he tried his best at fine leg, but in the process he injured himself uh, and one hopes that uh, he's fit, uh, he's able to bat because that is very important for England there. Ben Stokes, 11 hours, home when he's none for 23, so that was a blow for England today. I uh, couldn't bowl much there. Samit Patel uh, coming into the England team really showing uh, uh, lots of... Um, uh, uh, lots of skill there, 23 overs, 3 maidens, 85 runs and 2 wickets. Moin Ali, 33, 49, 2. Other rest of 10 overs, only in a number for 41. Uh, well, England had uh, just uh, 2 overs to face uh, before close of play and on the first day of the final test match at the Sharjah Cricket Ground, uh, which left uh, Alistair Cook uh, was at to score uh, of 6 deliveries and Moin Ali uh, hit one boundary. He was not out on 4. England closed at 4 for no loss on the first day. Rahat Ali bowled 1 over, which was a maiden. Yasir Shah was given the ball, just Ms. Bawlak uh, really trying to see whether Yasir Shah could pick up an early wicket because the turn was pretty evident and it will be an interesting battle tomorrow 
when England will be facing Yasir Shah because the ball is turning and uh, we all know uh, in fact Pakistan also has uh, uh, some lot of uh, spinners in their mix so it is going to be very difficult barber so they have a lot of spinners there as we all know and Azhar Ali can also bowl as you know so it's interesting the ball is turning and uh, it's going to be an interesting proposition uh, but uh, well uh, I thought England still uh, took the honors uh, by bowling out uh, Pakistan on the first day for 234 runs but now England will have a real test against the Pakistan spinners as the ball uh, is definitely definitely turning right from the first day well dear fans of Cabers other than that just one thing before I go uh, this is for the Bangladesh cricket fans uh, the team has been announced for the uh, um, ODI series against Zimbabwe uh, we see an uncapped baller and uh, and I, I'm also told he holds a lot of promise for uh, Bangladesh his name is Kamrul Hassan Ravi he has been doing very well in the Bangladesh domestic scene and he also played against the South African team at the Gauteng he took four wickets I'm told he's a, a fine prospect and Al Amin Hussain who was uh, uh, sent out from the a World Cup by Bangladesh uh, is making a comeback. He has been selected, uh, but there is no place for Anamul Haq, unfortunately. Uh, well, I'm not going to go into much details. I just wanted to briefly cover that. Well, dear fans and subscribers, you, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, cricket show of mine today. And as I said, uh, dear fans and subscribers, tomorrow will be uh, my show, which will be done from this studios, uh, which will be going on. Uh, but after that, I am taking a, a, a real break uh, for one month. So taking a break for one month doesn't mean that I won't do the show. Uh, cricket is very dear to me, but probably uh, I wouldn't know whether how professional it would be, how regular I would be. I wouldn't be. Uh, I won't. Uh, I, one can't hazard a guess there. But uh, I will try my best to please you all, dear friends of the channel. So keep uh, keep your eyes uh, fixed on cricket happenings. Uh, and as and when um, your cricket happening show appears, well, you will know, uh, dear fans, subscribers, and you can watch me in full color. But as I said, I can't promise you because uh, I'm taking a break. Uh, it's like a vacation for me, so I'm taking a break right now. So uh, and I wouldn't be. I, I'm not going to tell you where I'm going. Uh, it could be my hometown. It could be somewhere else. I don't want to really talk about all that. But uh, one thing that I can say, I am on vacation. Uh, I'm taking a small short break of a month uh, before I come back into my Canadian studios. Well, dear fans, friends, Canadian Toronto studios, I would say. And uh, well, fans, friends, subscribers, uh, on this note, uh, it's time for me to wind up this cricket show. But tomorrow, yes, there will be a cricket show. I'll be coming live. I'll be coming uh, with a cricket show. I'll be talking about the second day's play uh, between England and Pakistan and also, if at all, any other cricket news exists. Well, dear fans and subscribers, thanks for your continued company and cooperation to the Cricket Happening Show. Uh, I'll be seeing you all tomorrow. Till such time, it's goodbye this on a Sunday. Thank you.